Because my eyes are full of pressure. Yeah, it sounds dark now. It's live, here you go. Live. Why is my head still open? <laughs> there you go, you guys are live. So whatever you need. Nope. Why have you got five smiles? So nice. Lawrence is off the table. Put your chair up, yeah? Lawrence is off. This is not us right now. Hey. It's not us right now. Yeah, it's delaying. not. A, it's delaying. Real time is when you. What's your real time? So just when you're about to end the stream, just click on someone. If someone pop next to the wall, pop up. The other side. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. They don't touch anything. Just. Hi guys. God bless. God bless. Waiting for somebody to pop on here. Um. Let's see. Let's see if um, I can tell if someone is on. Let's see if someone is on this time. Hmm? It'll pop up and then it's the. The one we got over. Right? Let's just wait to see if someone comes on. So There's that one here. Why it's a guy. All right. Hello, it's a guy. Just gonna wait a couple more minutes for someone else to pop on. A few more people to pop on. We can start this chat. We can start this video. Hello, it's a guy. That's weird. Yeah, I see it. It's on TV. It's on TV. So I don't know how to get to see it for a moment. Alright, so we could just stop. Why is the lane? It's like that. Oh, okay. Alright, guys. I'm just going to wait a couple more minutes. I uh, have to see if anybody else pops on here. Glory to God. Two. Oh, okay. Somebody else. All right. We'll get started here. Tonight's title is Deity of God, the Trinity. So, I want to show you guys a graph. Hallelujah. You guys can see that. That is the graph that we have, the diaphragm. Glory to God. Just wanted to show you guys that. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, so <clears throat> the deity, the Godhead, the Trinity. Okay, so I'm gonna start out by praying. Um, I like to pray before my videos. Okay. Um, hold on a second, guys. Sorry. Um, be with me first live. Trying to figure this all out, these videos. Glory to God. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. You see me, huh? Um, Amen. Okay, so it's the first Christians use this diaphragm that I just showed you to explain the Trinity. Diaphragm. Hallelujah. All right. To explain the Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all God, but these terms aren't named for the same person. Hallelujah. The persons are distinct. Okay? So I'm going to do a quick prayer before we get into this. Hallelujah. Me and my brother Jerry here are going to work together on this. Um, God bless you. All right. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you will just guide us through this teaching tonight. Lord, to God, that we can just speak on your word, Father, about your Trinity, hallelujah. And um, may you just guide us through this video. Amen, amen. Okay, amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so the Father isn't the Son. The Son isn't the Holy Spirit, okay? 
and I got this paper here. And the spirit isn't the father, okay? No. God is a divine being, absolutely perfect in three persons, okay? His being is the difference between God and the universe he created. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are called three persons because they relate to each other personally. Hallelujah. When Christians talk about be believing in one God in three persons, the Trinity, it doesn't mean they believe in one God in three gods or three persons in one person or three persons in three gods or one person in three gods. Rather, signifying, um, signify they believe in one God, okay? There's one God in three persons. It can get confusing, guys. Thus, the Father is God. The, the first person of the Trinity is the Father. The Son is God, the second person of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is God, the third person of the Trinity. Why do Christians believe in the Trinity? The Bible clearly teaches that there is one God. Nevertheless, the three persons are called God. There is one God. Hallelujah. Um, we're going to go through some verses here, guys. Amen, amen. Um, Deuteronomy 6.4. And it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Hallelujah. All right. In Isaiah 44, verse 6, it says, Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. Amen. Hallelujah. And then in, if, you, if you go to chapter 44 of Isaiah, verse 8, it says, Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from the time, and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yeah, there is no God. I know not any. Oh. Yeah, okay. We can jump down to, um, because that was a misprint, but that doesn't go with what we're speaking on that one, so it doesn't have, um, doesn't talk about the same one. Three, the words in fourth of line, people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears, is 43, 8, Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 8, which they repeated on the syllabus it's it's incorrect um, I know you guys aren't looking at it but we're seeing it here oh yeah there's just a misprint here oh okay yeah okay I see what it is you so you don't, you know. well they don't see this so then we could just jump to Isaiah 45 5 and uh, read that so if we jump to Isaiah 45 5 um, we're reading these verses because it's all biblical. It's all stuff from the Bible. So you guys know that we're not just saying this. These are verses from the Bible explaining the Trinity. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So Isaiah 45, 5, it says what? You want to read it? I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Amen. Okay, so the Father is God. And uh, if we go to 1 Corinthians 8, 6, it says, But to us there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things. And we in him, in one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. 1 Corinthians 1, 3 Hallelujah. It we says, went a little backwards. Well, that's the way, that's the way <laughs> that's it is here. But. That's the way it's going to be explained. Mm. So, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and then we get to we want to read the part right here. Um, I'm going to say with me. Jesus Christ. No? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Ephesians. Ephesians uh, 4 4. Next is Ephesians 4 4. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Amen. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, one Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. I hope you guys aren't lost already. <laughs> the Son is God. <clears throat> well, am I going too fast here? No. Um, I have a habit of rushing through things, guys. If I'm going too fast, just let me know. I'm going through the verses and I'm just in my mind as I'm speaking here. If I'm going too fast, you let me know. But just like Genesis, I like I like this. John 1, 1, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Hallelujah. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Then, then we jump to John chapter 1, 14. <clears throat> and the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. <laughs> then we're going to go to guys if you have a bible you can open it up to these verses as well and read along like i said if we're going too fast let us know we're going to read john chapter 10 verse 30 and it says <laughs> i and my father are one then the jews took up stones again to come on Yes. Yep. Just making sure because we found a couple of mistakes. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shewed you from my Father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. <clears throat> so Thomas, Jesus' disciple, called John 20, chapter 20, 28, and said, And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus, and Jesus didn't tell Thomas he was mistaken. Instead, he accepted these titles, others in the scripture including Paul and Bar Barnabas in Acts 14 10 through 19 were refused worship as it as if he were God <laughs> amen amen <laughs> Hebrews 1 8 says but unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Amen. And then Philippians 2, Nine. 9. Wherefore God hath also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. That at the time, name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Paul, the author of Philippians, says about Jesus what in Isaiah 45, 23 says about God and our Lord, and comes to the conclusion that Jesus is Lord, the same God. The same God. Hallelujah. See these verses about Jesus, deity, Isaiah chapter 7, verses 14. 
Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, John chapter 1, verse 1, John chapter 1, verse 18. There's a lot of them. It keeps going. John chapter 8, verses 58 to 59. John chapter 10, verses 30. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Romans chapter 9, verse 5. And chapter 10, verses 9 to 13. All these numbers. Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. Titus chapter 2, verse 13. Hebrews chapter 1. 3, 8, 2. Peter, chapter 1, verse 1, and 1 John, chapter 5, verse 1. Hallelujah. Amen. So these are the verses about Jesus' deity, okay? Mm -hmm. Those were the verses for that. Um, the Holy Spirit is God, and um, if you go to Acts 5, 3, it says, But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled Ananias. thine heart? Huh? Ananias. Ananias, sorry. I said it wrong. Why has why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. These verses equal the Holy Ghost to God. 2 Corinthians 3.17 Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. Um, Here the term Lord alludes at Exodus chapter 34, verse 34, the passage of the Old Testament that Paul quoted in the verse before 2 Corinthians 3.16. More than 60 verses of the Bible mentions the persons together. Matthew chapter 3 verse 16. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Amen. Glory to God. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Sorry if you guys wanted to kind of follow along. We're just like pushing along without even hesitating. Just, you know, we're just kind of... We're going, we're going through this, but if you, you know, we're reading the verses to you guys as we, as we tell you. So, if you ever want to go back and uh, reread or rewind to get the verses, that's fine as well. But we are reading the verses, so um, if it gets confusing, I'm sorry, but I can probably put some of these verses in the description. But I don't know how many it will let me um, add in. It might be too many, but um, amen. Just try to follow along. <laughs> uh, what are we on? Uh, Second Corinthians, chapter thirteen, verse fourteen. It says, "The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all." Amen. And then we jump to Ephesians four four. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. Amen. Any, uh, that you want to go? Any, uh, Titus? Uh, Titus 3, 4. For after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward men, appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, by according to his mercy, he saved us. By the washing of regeneration, 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 and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. See also John three thirty four through thirty five, John fourteen twenty six, John fifteen twenty six, John sixteen verses thirteen through fifteen, 
Romans 14, 17, Romans 15, 13 through 17, Romans 15, verse 30, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11, 17 through 19, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 4 through 6, Galatians 2, um, verses 21 through chapter 3, 2 chapter 3, uh, verse 2, Galatians 4, verse 6, Ephesians 2, 18, Ephesians 3, 11 through 17, Ephesians 5, verses 18 through 20, Colossians 1, 6 through 8, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, 1 through 5, 1 Thessalonians 4, um, 2 and 8, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 18, 19, 2, I mean, sorry, 2 Thessalonians um, 3, verse 5, Hebrews chapter 9, 14, 1 Peter 1, 2, um, chapter 1, 2, 1 John chapter 3, verses 23 and 34, 1 John 4, verses 13, 14, and... Oh, say... <laughs> oh, we messed that up. That one. It's okay. And then we're going to go down to, let's see, equality in tit titles unique to God. One, one more. This is number one. Creation is the works of his hands only. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. We are, you know, we're talking about this. <laughs> in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. <clears throat> then we got. Psalms 102 verse 25 of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the work of thy hands Isaiah chapter 44 verse 24 thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer and he that formed thee from the womb I am the Lord that maketh all things that stretcheth forth the heavens alone that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself <clears throat> the first and the last which is number two Isaiah chapter 44 verse 6 thus saith the Lord the King of Israel and his Redeemer the Lord of hosts I am the first I am the last and beside me there is no God number three Lord of Lords Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 17 for the Lord your God is God of gods and the Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons nor taketh reward. <clears throat> Psalms 136, verse 3. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. And number 4. Immutable and eternal. Psalms chapter 90, verse 2. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Psalm 102, 26. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yeah, all of them shall wax old like a garment, as a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. Thou, but thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. The children of thy servants shall continue, and their seed shall be established before thee. Uh, Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Number 5. Number 5. Judge of the whole world. <clears throat> Genesis. Chapter 18, verse 25. That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth be right? In Psalm chapter 94, verse 2. Lift up thyself, thou judge of the earth. 
re render a reward to the proud. Psalm 96, verse 13. Before the Lord, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. He shall judge the word, world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Psalm 98, verse 9. Before the Lord, for he cometh to judge the earth, with righteousness shall he judge the world, and the people with equity. Okay, we got, we got more. All right, um, so number six is only Savior, no one else can save. And you can find that in Isaiah 43, 11. It says, I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Isaiah 45, verse 21 tell ye and bring them near yeah let them take counsel together who have declared this from ancient time who have told it from that time have not i the lord and there is no god else beside me a just god and a savior there is none beside me look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth for I am God, and there is none else. We go to Hosea 13, verse 4, and it says, Yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me, for there is no Savior beside me. Number seven, he redeems a people from their sins to be their possession. Exodus 19, 5 says, now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. We go to Psalms 130 verse 7, it says, Let Israel hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plentifulness, redemption. If you check out Ezekiel 37, 23, I just read this last night, um, chapter 37, amazing. Mm -hmm. um, neither shall there, neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions, but I will save them out of their dwelling places, wherein they have sinned and will cleanse them so shall they be my people, and I will be their God. 8. Listen and answer the praise of those who call upon him. All right. Psalms 86, verse 5, it says to us, For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive, and plenteousness and mercy unto all them that call upon thee. We only need to call on the lord hallelujah for our prayers hallelujah give ear O lord unto my prayer and attend to the voice of my supplications in the day of my trouble i will call upon thee for thou wilt answer me among the gods there is none like unto thee O lord neither are there any works like unto thy works hallelujah Jump to Isaiah 55, verse 6, and it says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Hallelujah. Meaning he'll forgive you. Pardon. Hallelujah. He will forgive you. Come to the Lord and he will forgive you. Hallelujah. Go to Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and sow thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And if we go to the prophet Joel, chapter 2, verse 32, it says to us, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. As the Lord has said, and in the remnant, remnant, remnants, remnants, whom, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> tongue tie, remnants, whom the Lord shall call. And then we're gonna go to number nine. Um, I'll read this one. Read the next. Only okay. God possesses divine glory. And then Isaiah right away. 
forty to eight. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Like we got people who worship idols, and we know a lot of stories about that, right? A lot hasn't changed around the world as far as that goes, but anyway. So Isaiah forty eight eleven. For mine own sake, even for mine own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. Number 10. Worship by the angels. Okay. Psalm chapter 97, verse 7. Confounded be all they that serve graven images, that boast themselves of idols. Worship him, all ye gods. Number 11, a giver of life. Deuteronomy 32, 39. See now that I, even I, I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Psalm 36, verse 9. For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. Now that we got the quality and the titles of Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Number, Number one. one is creation. The works of thy hand. John chapter 1 verse 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven, and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Now, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, and thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. And number two, the first and the last. We we'll go to Revelation chapter 1, verse 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. In Revelation chapter 22 verse 13 I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end the first and the last and number three is Lord of Lords first Timothy chapter 6 verse 15 which in his times he shall shew who is the blessed and only potentate the King of Kings and Lord of Lords Revelation again chapter 17 I mean yeah chapter 17 verse 14 these shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful Revelation chapter 19 verse 16 and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written King of kings and Lord of lords. Number four, immutable and eternal. Colossians. This is Colossians chapter 1, verse 17. And I'm going to read it. For you. So, Colossians, I'm going to read these verses for you that he's going to tell you. That way, you guys don't have to look them up. But Colossians 1 17, like he said, for immutable and eternal. And it says, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, it says, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. See, everything is made by him. Hebrews 1, we're going to go to Hebrews 1. 1, chapter 11, verse 12. This lighting is bad here. Let's see if I can find it. Hebrews, yep. Hebrews 1, 11. And it says... They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment. Glory to God. And then we're going to jump to Hebrews 13, verse 8. <laughs> the 
Got it? I got it. Well, okay, you can in the Son and the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen. And then number five. five. Judge of the whole world. Judge of the whole world. You can find uh, Book of John, chapter five, verse twenty two. Sorry. <laughs> John chapter five, verse twenty two. It says, For the Father judgeth, judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgments unto the Son. Hallelujah. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Hallelujah. So we're going to jump to um, Acts. Acts chapter 17, 17, verse 31. You can find Acts, and I'll get second Corinthians. Acts chapter 17, verse 31. In the yep. name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, I thought I was there. Okay. You got it? <laughs> I got it. I just want to make sure I got it. Because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men. And that he hath raised him oh, from the dead. I know no, that's my opinion. Okay, we got Second, Second Corinthians, Corinthians five ten. Chapter five, verse ten. It says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Amen. And then we're gonna to go to Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 okay. got it? I got it. The name of the Father, the Son, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom amen okay. Yep, for now, and then we're going to number six now, which is Savior of the whole world. There's no salvation without him. So we're going to start reading a few verses that go with that. And the first one is John, Jeff, um, if you want to look that up, John 4, 42. 442. <clears throat> Four forty two, yep. And the following son of the Spirit. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? Amen. And then it's Acts four verse twelve. Um And it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So there is no other name that we can be saved by. No other name. You know? Amen. Titus 2.13. Titus you got that one, Jeff? I got it. In the name of the Son of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Okay. You got it? Yep. Amen. Now I'm going to read. What is it? Let's see. First John 4, chapter 4, 14. Who's got that one? You got it? Yeah, and it says. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Amen. The Son is the Savior of the world. Hallelujah. 
He redeems a people from their sins to be their possession. Titus 2.14 Listen and answer the praise of those who call upon him. Glory to God. Did you um, hear Titus? Amen. Titus 2.14. Oh, I thought that was... Um, <laughs> yeah, I jumped ahead. Sorry, guys. Okay. Is that what it says right there? No. Okay. Um, oh, no? Okay. Can you get this one? Go ahead. All right. 14. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Sorry, guys. I jumped over that. Sometimes it's easy to just be like, oh, I'm at, where am I? Like I said, I, I, I'm I, always <laughs> doing things quickly. Sorry, I need to be more patient. All right, so let's see. And now it's making us look all over the place, and we're jumping around and trying not to make mistakes, obviously, but, you know, we're doing the best we can, so bear with us, everyone. Everything's fine. So it says in number seven, I mean, number eight, Listen and answer the praise of those who call upon him. And we're going to read a few verses that go with that. Listen and answer the praise of those who call upon him. John 14, 14. Hope you guys are enjoying this. <laughs> you got it yet? Yeah. Nope, nope, you got it. I'm going to follow the Son of the Holy Spirit. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And then uh, Romans chapter 10, verses 12 through 13. Chapter 10. Chapter 10. Yeah. And 12, 13. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For God is for everybody in the whole world. Amen. Oh yeah. First Corinthians um, chapter one, mm -hmm. verse two, and I got that. It says, Unto the church of God which is at Corinth, 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 to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Amen. Then we're going to have this first Corinthians, second Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 8 and 9. Yeah. Second Corinthians. Twelve. You got it. You got it. All right. It says, "For this thing, I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me, and He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather glorify glory." rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me now I remember reading right here before basically you know like when we try to pray for things like you know healing of a sickness like say a headache or a stomach ache for an example you know yeah sometimes certain things because we don't know how God's gonna work he may or may not you know it's up to him what he decides when he decides to, to heal us of something like an infirmity you know it could be some kind of sickness and you know we don't always understand how God works why you know people ask why doesn't he you know like help me with this one thing I'm asking him and you know like depression you know or, or anxiety um, see we don't always have the answer you know only he knows and he's you know, he chooses when to glorify himself in, yeah. and in like the time Paul, being yeah like Paul was asking about that and like you can have like a like a limp or a crutch, you know, like Jacob too. You know, you had that. Yeah. You, you wanted a blessing, and you got, you know, his hip dislocated, right? <laughs> so it's like it, it it makes you humble. It makes you remember that we're not in charge. He is. Yep. So you know it's what I mean? Like, it's, it's 
cool, right? <laughs> now we can Amen. learn about that. You know, it's like awesome. We can't always, you know, get it, get what we want, right? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Number nine is Jesus possesses the divine glory, which is John chapter seventeen, verse five. Let me get that right. 17.5. Yeah. Oh, you got it already? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. And already on to number 10. Worship by the angels, which is in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. Amen. Number 11, giver of life. And there's three that goes with this, and it's they're all three of them are in John. So if we turn to John to read these last, these three, um, chapters, scriptures, verses. Verses. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So the first one is, we're going to go to John chapter 5, verses 21. Okay. I got that one. Okay, go ahead. For as the Father raiseth up the dead, and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Amen. John. It's who he wants, like Jerry said earlier. It's quickening to who he wants. All right, ten twenty-eight. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. We belong to him, so it's like the mark of the beast. Where you know, you know, it's like they're going to have the mark. So you remember what we learned that what's going to happen to them. Yeah, we were reading, but that's a different study. That's about Revelation, but yeah, but yeah. we're you know we're talking about everything that comes to my mind is just you know. Amen. <laughs> Go ahead, let them know. Her. But <clears throat> you know, like and then just like we're you know we're the chosen ones, you know we're the saints. So it's 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 weird because you know then we we will have our invisible marking as well, but we're theirs. I mean, we're gods, you know. Yep. You know, we belong to God. So we're we're good, you know, in the church we'll be gone, you know, like the bridegroom, you know, when the when the rapture comes. Yeah. Maybe we should do a study of that soon. Um we're gonna read the last part mm -hmm. of this and that is John chapter eleven twenty five. So Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. So, Amen. We got divine attributes, eternal. Now, Father, right? It the says, Father, yeah, because yeah, it says Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Excuse me. So Romans will be chapter sixteen, verse twenty-six to twenty-seven. And this is for the Father. Yep. Can you read that one, Jay? Yeah. Okay, that one you got it? It's going all over the place. So. <laughs> Amen. 26. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm not going to misread something. Okay, so 26, 27. Yeah. Following some of those spirit. But now is made manifest. And by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. To God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. 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 And I got the next one, is, which is um, for the Son, Revelation 1, chapter 1, verse 17. And it says, um, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, 
I am the first and the last. Amen. I, I love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the Holy Ghost is Hebrews chapter 9, 14. following some of the Holy Spirit. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? 914. Nine, um, yeah. yeah. And then creator of all things now. Creator of all things. Again, it's going to be Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. First Father, one. Psalms 100, verse 3. You know how much we love Psalms. <laughs> yep. And, and you guys are following Vicky on her Psalms. Um, I'm way up there. I'm in the 70s now. <laughs> a Psalms a day. I, I haven't been doing Psalms every single day now because I'm trying to get in some extra stuff. But Read a Psalm a day. It keeps the doctor away. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful to learn. How can you not love Psalms? Okay, you got it. I got it. You got it. Okay. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Amen. And then the Son is Colossians chapter one sixteen. Colossians, yeah. It's uh, what is it? Colossians one sixteen. One sixteen. It says, "Name of the Holy Spirit." For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominations or principal oh, dominion, sorry, or principalities or powers. All things were created by Him and for Him. Created everything. Oh, I'm moving right over here. Um, that was Colossians. Oh, so Go now it's Psalms. <laughs> Psalms 104:30 for the Holy Spirit. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thou sendest forth Thy Spirit; they are created, and Thou renewest the face of the earth. I don't know if everyone's understanding everything here. Um, it's okay with you. Sorry too if it's like super fast, like we're not giving people enough time to really, I guess. There's a lot of information, but uh, we're giving you guys the verses, so if you do misinterpret what we're saying, you can always go back and, and, and get the verses and jot them down and study yourself. It's always good to reflect in your own study reflect in your own way of reading and praying to God and asking the Spirit to guide you in learning. Um, always ask for understanding. Always try to study yourself. You know, even though we're going through this study and, and, and we're giving you verses, it's always good to do your own reading. Study the Bible also yourself. Don't only watch videos. Don't always try to just seek answers by videos uh, or read teachings because Sometimes there's people out there that don't know exactly what they're teaching too. I'm not saying anything about against anybody, but I'm telling you guys in regards to your spiritual self, your salvation, you know, your you need to protect yourself and you need to study the word of God. You need to learn the word of God for yourself. You need to grow. Hallelujah. And we're doing this to help, yes. But it's always good to have your own reflection, your own study, your own um, understanding of what you're learning. So it's good to go back and research, research An yourself. Annotate, and, like Billy Graham had said, annotate. So. Yeah. And write med these meditate down. on the word. You know, like always. Yeah. You know, like you say too. You know, I mean, if you want understanding, you pray on it. Um, sometimes, no matter how many times you might have to read it. Yeah. You know, sometimes. Every time you read it, you know, you might read it, it might come differently, just like any book. You read it again, it's like, wait a minute, it looks like I, I missed something. Yeah, but see, the Bible right? is, the Bible um, can change depending on what you're going through or how God's speaking to you as well. So mm -hmm. that's why, see, with the Bible, it's inspired by the Holy Spirit. You ask the Holy Spirit um, to guide you in anything that you want to learn, anything that you need 
guidance on or understanding on, the Holy Spirit is the only one that can really give you an accurate understanding of what you're trying to understand. I can tell you guys verses, I can go through this with you and give you uh, somewhat of an understanding, but no understanding is better than the Holy Spirit's understanding that he will give you if you ask. I'm trying to tell you guys to seek the Lord, seek the Holy Spirit's guidance. Don't always look for, you know, guidance from us or from others. Always try to get your own guidance as well. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm just doing this because I want to help edify. We, we want to help edify you guys and um, talk about this, kind of give you guys some, a summary of what we believe in and, um, and how important this is to understand. Um, jot down the verses to understand, learn to God. But just giving you a little bit of... Um, encouragement to read the Bible yourself as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, At least for me, it becomes more and more exciting because the more yeah. I want to learn, the more I'm, I'm digging in the Word, you know, you just stay hungry, right? You know, Stay hungry. Like, why would you not <laughs> want to learn, right? I want to know. I want to learn. I, I love it. <laughs> you never stop learning. There's so much to learn. It's 66 stop, books of of, of uh, prof it's just prophecies are so strong in this book. There's so much to From learn the Old in this Testament book. to the New Testament. It's just incredible. You want to learn God's character? Read your Bible. You right. want to learn about the God? Comes read alive. your Bible. You want to know about prophecy? Read your Bible. You <laughs> want guidance? Read your Bible. You want to know what to do, how to live? Read your Bible. You want to know your precepts and, and, and uh, statutes? Read your Bible. You want to understand your commandments? Read your Bible. It's all the Bible. This is the Word of God, inspired by the Holy Spirit. It is a gift. We must use it. We must grow from it. Um, we can't teach you more than what this Word can teach you. Okay? And I just want you guys to realize that. Um, no more, understanding is better than the The more Bible. you grow in the Word and in the Lord, like the more you read and you want to know and learn, the more it comes alive to you, the more... like unbelievers right away they may scoff and be like it's just written by um, you know men like people and um and that's just that's not true obviously you know like Vicky was just saying you know from old testament to new testament you know and like um it's inspired by yeah. the holy spirit and like and genesis and john you yeah. know in the beginning was the word yeah you know, it was God. witnesses it says it when we read a couple verses it's witnesses isaiah talks about Jesus being born yeah. then you know these prophecies these yeah. these prophecies came to pass and blaspheme the Holy Ghost um, Hallelujah. now we're so on Jeremy we, uh, we uh <laughs> we got off track here but it's always good to go with the Spirit of the Lord he probably wants to speak to you guys about something and we're just going with the flow guys um, our first live video we're trying to uh, I'm sorry guys I don't know if this is disconnected or something but I don't know what that is Okay, it's reconnected. <laughs> okay. I think we lost you guys for a minute. I'm not sure, but glory to God. Um, God willing, we can finish this teaching. Uh, we're almost we're almost done, guys, I believe. Um, bear with us. If you need to pause it and, and come back, that's fine. When this is done, replay it, whatever. But we this, are on. This is one of those words that might be a little hard to pronounce, and a lot of people mm -hmm. may or may not know what it is and what it means. Um, like omnipresence, it's like God is everywhere, all the time. He's everywhere. Capable to be at all places at once. Uh, again, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? So the Father, Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 24. And I have that right, okay. right here. So Amen. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, save the Lord? Do, do not I fill heaven and earth? Seek the Lord. You can't hide from Him. You, know, you think no, you can get away with whatever? You know? Didn't David yeah. try to hide from Him? You know, like your potatoes and your corn and you throw it? You know? <laughs> All, right. All right, so the next one All is right. Ephesians? Yes, Ephesians um, chapter 1, verse 23. I got that one. And it says, Which is His body, the fullness of Him that filleth all in all? Hallelujah. Oh, Don't you know we ha are the temple of the Lord? Glory to God. I had to say God that. <laughs> Christ. Hallelujah. We belong to the Lord. So you've got the Son, right? <clears throat> Ephesians 1 23. Yep. We just read that. Holy one. Ghost. The Holy Psalms. Ghost. Psalms. Uh oh. 
I think this might be one of my favorite ones. Well, I love a lot of Psalms, but. <laughs> Psalms 139, verse 7, guys. Let's go to that. Hallelujah. Oh, a really good one. <laughs> 150 psalms, so. It's a lot of psalms. And they're all beautiful. Hallelujah. Sorry, it's taking a couple minutes here. It's okay. Hey. Psalm 139, verse 7. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? I like when it says. Let's see, read that again, Jeff. Read that again for a second. Seven. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? Amen. Amen. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. Okay, so now we're going to talk about omniscience. Omniscient. I think that's how you pronounce it, right? Omniscient. Isn't it? Omniscient. All knowing. Omniscient. Uh, omniscient. Yeah, I think that's what it is because it's omnipresent, yeah. omniscient, all known. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So all father, knowing. Yeah, father would be First John three twenty. I got that one. Got it. It says, "For our, for if our heart condemned us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things." Hallelujah. And then that's so whatever I can't get, but he does. So. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> working together here. Yeah. Yeah, we go from First John to John. Now, yes. the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verse 17. You can find that one, Jeff, and I'll find it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to follow the Son of the Holy He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. <laughs> Amen. You know, he kept Holy asking Christ. because he knew, and you know, he's just like three, 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 you know what I mean? It's like he just gave, you know, he said it three times, you know, and he just basically just like denying him three times, you know, it's like, and he was getting aggravated. He's like, You know, I love you. You know, and, and like um, Eric was teaching us, right? Yeah. All the different ways, you know, the Greek language. I was just saying how it's so like obviously very different from English, and different ways to um, show love and, and talk about love, like brotherly love, and you know, eros being like what romantic. I think it was. Yeah. Love. I feel, um, it's hard to remember them all. I I had it in my my yeah. book over there. You have it somewhere. In the, yeah, it's, it's down not stuff. next to me right now. Sorry, guys, but. I have it written down somewhere. So what do you, um, where do we leave off, Jeff? Uh, um, that was omniscient or omniscient. Yeah, so we're <laughs> on the Holy Ghost now. First Corinthians chapter two. Oh, here we go. Two ten. Verse ten. I got it right here. It says, "But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yeah, the deep things of God." Okay. Amen. No, Acts, Sovereign Supernatural. I don't know why it reads like that. But the Father of Ephesians. Ephesians uh, chapter one, one verse five. Okay. Amen. God bless you guys. God bless you. Okay. I'm gonna you right no, go ahead. Yeah, I got it. In the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Having predestinated unto us the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Like he, you know, like we become his children, you know, it's, it's crazy to think that, well, we're innocent to a point growing up from the baby up. Yeah. You know, when we become... Like 10, 11, we knowing, start doing it. Yeah. Like knowing from right from wrong, it's like the innocence period, you know, the innocence and then, you know, once we become born again and we believe in Jesus and he's our Lord and Savior then we become his children you know it's like we are his children because he created us all but some of us are going to be like not acknowledging him not accepting him not believing on him and so 
where basically those people's I consider child children of God. Who are we're all they're, considered children of God. But yes, they just, just yeah. Yeah, but it's just God's reaching out. He He will reach out to them all, but it's up to us to make that choice. He gives right. us the opportunity for choice. Yeah. To choose Him, and to also, choose His Son. You know, it's like um, gives you He gives you time to repent. You know. And into the last days, you know, it's crazy we're just uh, living on that too, you know. Uh, you know, how many how many miraculous works does God have to show for people to, you know, believe in him, you know? Like just he keeps trying and showing time and time again and people some some people are just not gonna believe. They're just not gonna believe, you know. There are going to be some that are left behind, unfortunately, you know. That's why we pray. We're going to continuously pray for everyone. And we'll be martyrs, you know, but hopefully, you know, we'll be taken up right away. <laughs> but, yeah. So we're on um, the um, sun? Matthew. Yep, Matthew chapter 3. Chapter 8, verse 3. Oh, yeah, chapter, okay. I got that one, Jeff. Yeah. It says, And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately... His leprosy was clean, was was cleansed. Hallelujah. I'm like, I don't know what happened. Glory to God. Glory to God. This is um when Jesus um, cleanses the leper. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we got one more for this for the um uh, sovereign supernatural acts. Oh, see, these are acts that he did that were supernatural. So see how he cleaned the leprosy. Hallelujah. And we're going to go to the Holy Ghost now. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 11. Chapter 12. Chapter 12. Yep. Verse, verse 11. 11. The but all these worketh that one in the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Giver of life, Father. Genesis chapter 1, verses 11 to 31. Okay, so let's jump to Genesis 1. There we go. Chapter 11 to 31. So that's we're gonna read quite a bit of this. So let me you want me to read this too? Yeah. And it says in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass and herb, yield and seed, and the fruit tree yield and fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb, yield and seed after his kind, and the tree yield and fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. In the evening and in the morning were the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be the sign, be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so. And God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also and God set them in a firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. In the evening and in the morning were the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly a moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, which the water brought forth abundantly. After their kind, in every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the fowl multiply in the earth. And in the evening and in the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, 
cattle and creeping things, the beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and, the, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb barren seed, which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of the tree yield and seed. To you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And evening and morning were the sixth day. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And then we're also, for the Father, we're also going to jump to John 5.21. Amen. Glory to God. John chapter 5, verse 21, and I'm going to follow in the Son of Holy Spirit. For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Amen. Holy Ghost. Good time. Give her a wife. Okay, so now we're going to go to the Son, which is John chapter 1 4. Yeah, you want to go to that since you're on John? You got these two. Um, it's gonna be two verses for for the Son as well, giver of life. Um, chapter one, verse four. Okay. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And John five twenty one. Amen. I thought we just read that. No, we didn't read that one. Did we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> it goes for giver of life what as well. What the heck? It goes for giver of life. Yeah. Read it again. Alright. For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Amen. Yeah. Then we're going to go to Holy Ghost. And that's Romans chapter 8. We got Romans chapter 8. Verse 10. Yeah, I got it. Wait, where's 10? Oh. 10 and 11, right? Okay. Yeah. So it says, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you he that raises up christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you amen glory to god beautiful it's like they're bunching them together side by side awesome we got one more to read for you guys for that for the holy ghost and that's john 3 8 Jeff. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Amen. Born again, baptized, Lord's God. Thy strengthener of believers, 
my father. So we're going to go to Psalms 138, verse 1. Amen. John chapter 3, verse 8. Right? No, oh, oh, yeah, right. Sorry. I was looking at <laughs> 138. I got miss one. Okay. That should I mark it. where I'm at. Okay. Son, and all is good. okay. I will praise thee with my whole heart before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. Amen. Always praise God. Lord's God. So I'm going to read the next one. Son, Philippians. Philippians 4.13. 4, we all know this one by heart. Yeah. This is one of the first verses usually we we learn quickly. Um, this one I suggest you guys study and know. Hallelujah. I got the shirt for this one. <laughs> and it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. He can do anything with Christ. Hallelujah. Holy Amen. Ghost. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 okay. 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 And the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man Amen it's because he's a person the spirit is a person, like we said, every person. So they're all personable. They're all personal to one another. Got my bookmark. Glory to God. I know there was like a million scriptures and verses there. All edifying. We take you through the Bible. Hallelujah. That's how we like it, right? All Do biblical. We? No, of course. We love of course. it. Amen. <laughs> but you know, we got truth. Um, Jesus is God. Same as the Father, those who deny could use the following verses in their argument. These heresy dates to the times of Philip III, Arhidaus, Ar Ar sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that one, 323 to 319 BC. Wrongfully used verses to, to teach Jesus was created. Oh, we got. Yeah, but it tells you here, right here. Mm -hmm. I think it's odd. Uh, this is the Colossians 115. Yeah, I think that um, it's already written here. Mm -hmm. It's already typed out. I can read it I Let me just um, check real quick. Yep, yeah, it is. Okay. So, Colossians 1.15, it says, Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Do you use a response? And the response is, firstborn can signify that Jesus was created because Apostle Paul said that all things were created in Christ and for Christ and he existed before all things and he sustained all creation Colossians 1 16 17 the firstborn traditionally is the main heir Paul says in his context Christ, the Son of God, is the main here of all creations. Verse 12 to 14. Verses 12 through 14. Um, you want to read that one? Yeah. Throughout history, many have shied away from the concept that Jesus is perfect God and perfect man and have tried to resolve the paradox, saying, Jesus was a mere man whom God spoke through, or that he was God and merely appears to be human. To some other beliefs more simply we admit the idea of Jesus becoming a man isn't easy to understand in all his dimension but the doctrine of the incomprehensibility of God teaches us that it is impossible for us to comprehend the Trinity or the hypostatic union what it teaches is that it is impossible for limited humans to understand the infinite God in a total form we as mere humans can't Close God in our minds. We, but we, sorry, but what we can do, and it's required of us, is to understand and receive what He has revealed in aspect of His nature. The revelation of God about Himself isn't unintelligible. 
The un incarnation, the truth of God becoming flesh, is clearly revealed in the Bible, and however, it is our duty to understand and receive to the extent that has been revealed to us. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, Jesus doesn't identify as Father, Son, Holy Spirit. What it says is the Christian baptism identifies a person who believes in the Father who sent his Son to die for our sins and the Holy Ghost whom the Father and the Son sent to dwell in our hearts. Amen. The truth. The Bible clearly shows that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are distinct persons. Some think that the doctrine of the Trinity contradicts the truth, that there is only one God. They argue that only Jesus is the true God, and therefore that Jesus is the name of the Father, and this, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go to Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. And not just the name of the Son, while it is true that there is only one God, we must allow the Bible to define what this means. The Bible makes it very clear that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are different persons. The Father sends the Son in Galatians 4.4. 4. You want to jump there? Or you, gotta... you want to jump there and read it? Or? Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law. Yeah. I understand that. Can you read that one? I mean, understand that? What was your second answer? Chapter 4, verse 4. Yeah. 4, verse, chapter 4, verse 1. Now I see that the here, as long as he is a child, differ nothing. From the servant. Four. Oh. <laughs> it's four? Yeah. Four four. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, I was reading first. Okay. Sorry about that guys. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Okay, I get it. Amen. It sounded a little different at first. You have to some kind of read a little slow yeah. to catch it. Right. Amen. Then we're going to go to 1 John 4.14. Four yep. It's, it's just that I put these new bookmarks and they're like shiny. And uh, they mess with my eyes. But I got it. 1 John 4.14. 4, and it says... And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Amen. Now the Father sends the Spirit. And we're in John now. So we're going to jump to John first. Is it first John? No. Nope. Oh, it's okay. Um, the Gospel, Gospel John. of John, yeah. chapter 14, verse 26. Fourteen twenty-six, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Sure right. You got it, Jeff? Yep. Name okay. of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. That's in Acts, basically, where and apostle basically originated from the book of Acts, which is incredible. And when Jesus left, you know, he ascended into heaven and you know, no one wanted him to leave, you know, it was sad to see him go. If I was there I'd be too We're like Jesus don't go. But of course, you know, he had to. It was it was just prophecy and destined to be and God's will. So So the spirit could come. Exactly, you know, or else the Holy Ghost wouldn't be able to, you know, work with us. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Amen. We're on Galatians 4 6. I got that one, Jeff. 
And it says in Galatians chapter 4, verse 6, it says to us, And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Amen. Amen. Because he is our comforter. He is our, he, he, he prays for us. He our intercessor. There he goes. Uh, um, ambassador? No, we're ambassadors. He, we're supposed to be ambassadors a, he, to Christ. He prays to Christ for yes. us. He helps he's us, growing. guides us, speaks to us, convicts us. He does everything to help yeah. guide us, to keep us on track. Amen. The Son speaks not for himself, but as the Father taught him. Now, that's John uh, chapter 8, verse 28. <clears throat> John? 8, 28. Okay. The Holy Spirit. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. Amen. And then Amen. chapter 12, saying John oh. chapter 12, um, verse 49. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, we're at like, we only got one page left. One left page of the study. Amen. The Spirit speaks, but not on his own, but on behalf of Christ. And we are in, for that, it's um, John. Chapter 16, verses 13 to 15. Albeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. And all things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall shew it unto you. And then I think chapter uh, verse 16 to oh, oh, no. the father loves the son, and the son loves the father. And that's John chapter 3, verse 35. There's a few of them back to back. Just trying to give you guys a better understanding. Three, verse 35. Yeah, it says, The father loveth the son. And hath given all things into his hand. Amen. Then five twenty. For the Father loveth the Son, and he and sheweth him all things that himself doeth, and he will shew him greater works than these that ye may marvel. And, uh, Verse 14. 1431. Chapter 14, verse 31. Okay. Yeah. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. Amen. Uh, the Father and the Son are two witnesses, and that's John, chapter 5, verse 31. Through 37. Through verse 37. 31? It's 
chapter 5, um, verses 31 to 47. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witness is witness of me is true. Ye sent unto John, and ye bear witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say, that ye might be saved. He was a he was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I gave greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me, and the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Amen. Yeah, that's what Miguel was saying earlier. Yeah, right. there's nobody seen the Father. But Jesus. But Jesus. Alright, um, what do I call it? <laughs> it's 8, right? 8, 16, um, 18? Chapter 8? Yeah, chapter 16 8. Verses 16 to 18. Yeah. God bless, God bless. Amen. Hope everyone's enjoying this. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just read in the comments. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, guys. God bless you. God bless you. And the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I and the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. Amen. So the Father and the Son glorify the, glorify each other. Uh, yeah, they glorify uh, each other. Yeah. John, John 17. 17. 1, 4, and 5. Five basically. Five verses then. Where is it? Um this one right. Chapter seventeen. No, right here. Right here. Oh right here, okay. Yeah, all right. So so it's John chapter seventeen verses one through five basically, right? Or one yeah. oh one four or five. Right? Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. One, four, and five. Sorry, guys. These words spec Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, "Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee." No, four to five, right? Four to yeah. five. Okay. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Amen. And the Spirit glorifies Jesus the Son. John chapter 16 verse 14. <laughs> he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall suit it unto you. We're Amen. In a different time. We're not in your time here. No, it's that okay. Works. It's uh, it's still going. Okay. Cool. Amen. Glory to God, guys. Sorry. Now the Son acts as advocate for us before the Father. Um, First John, chapter two, verse one. First John. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Two one right. And it says, My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Amen. It's like we're trying, not to, we're trying to like make sure we're not skipping any or missing any. 
Yeah, that was a uh, Greek par Paralytos. Paracletos. <laughs> Greek Paracletos. Jesus the Son sends the Holy Spirit, who is another advocate. Now that's John chapter 14, verses 16 through 26. Amen. The Gospel of John? Yep. Sixteen through twenty-six, right? Was it? No, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Oh, it's sixteen fourteen. Yeah, right. We're right here. Yeah, I'm sorry. What am I doing? It's right here. So, John chapter fourteen, verses sixteen and twenty-six. So, cha um, chapter fourteen, chapter sixteen. I mean, chapter fourteen, verses sixteen and twenty-six, guys. Amen. Uh, I'd like to remember the Father. What does it say? Uh, yeah. Spirit. It says in chapter 14, 16, 26. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let me just, I don't want to lose my place. All right. Okay. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. We're just talking about that. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while, in the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, Not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. That's um, what I guess. Jesus Christ is not the Father, but the Son of the Father. Amen. Okay. That's Second John, John three. three. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. Second John, verse three. Yeah. Okay, and then you follow the Son of the Grace be with you, mercy and peace. From God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. Amen. The Spirit speaks, but not on His own, but on behalf of Christ. And I believe, I think, I think that's John 16. Let's see. John 16. Yeah, chapter 16, verses 13 to 15. How about when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whoever, sorry, whoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will sue you things to come. He shall glorify me, for all shall receive of mine, and shall sue it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and shall sue it unto you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's so hard to lose your place where you are because it's like. It's because my lighting is bad. Sorry, guys. 
and the way they, they the are. father loves the son and the son loves the father John 3 verse 35 The Son, verse 4. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all. I'm confused all of a sudden. Chapter 3, right? It's right here. Um, one, two, five. Amen. Hold on, guys. So it is John chapter 3, verse 35. Yeah, right. Okay. All right. I just read that. Okay. You read that? Yeah, and it's chapter 5 after that, verse 20. Okay. Making sure I'm not missing any here. It's so easy to miss things. And it's 20, right? Yeah. For the Father loveth the Son, and sheweth him all things that himself doeth, and he will shew him greater works than these that ye may marvel. And then chapter 14, verse 31. It's chapter 14. Yep, verse 31. Yep, 31. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. The Father and the Son, Son are two witnesses. John chapter 5, verse 31 through 37. I think we read that earlier too, because yeah. it was the witnesses. But you can reread these verses, guys, if you want to. John chapter 5, verse 31 through 37. Um, John chapter 8, uh, verses 16 through 18. And then the Father and the Son glorify each other. And that is John chapter 17, verses 1, 4, and 5. And the Spirit glorifies Jesus the Son. And that is John chapter 16, 14. Okay? So the Son acts as an advocate for us before the Father. And that's First John 2, 1. Yep, the Greek pacolatos. <laughs> Sorry, I can't say this. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus the Son sends the Holy Spirit, who is another advocate, and that is John 14, 16, and 26. You just read that. So it's just reminding us, John, Jesus Christ is not the Father, but the Son of the Father, Second John, verse 3. Okay. You want to reread that, guys. Go right ahead. The Bible clearly teaches that Jesus was fully a human. As a child, he grew physically, intellectually, social, and spiritually. And that is Luke 2, verses 40 and, and, and uh, verses 52. He got tired, slept, sweated, experienced hunger and thirst, bled and died, and his, and his body was, be was buried. Hallelujah. In, uh, Matthew 42. Um, Luke, uh, Luke twenty two forty four, and uh, forty six seven, and then um, I'm not sure what that is. Okay, after he rose from the dead, guys, right? He ate and drank with human beings and allowed them to see his scars and touch his body. And that you can find in Luke twenty four, verses thirty nine to forty three, John chapter twenty verses 27 to 29 acts chapter 10 to 41 okay if you guys want to read on that hallelujah um the bible also clearly teaches that jesus is fully god hallelujah jesus did on earth what god can do he subdued the forces of nature matthew chapter 8 verses 23 through 27 in chapter 14 22 to 33 forgives sins which is in mark chapter 2 verses 1 through 12 and he gives life to who wants to give life john 
5, 19 through 23. Paul said that God won the church with his own blood. Hallelujah. Acts 20, verses 28. I actually want to read that one, guys. I'm intrigued to read that. Yeah, let's go to that real quick and read that one. I want to read that one. Um, Acts 20, verses 28. Oh, go ahead, Jeff. Go ahead. And the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Amen. Paul further said that the rulers of this world, acting unwisely, crucify the Lord of glory. And I think that's... Colossians 2 a it looks like. Yeah. Uh, no, we're going there now. No, we can just. Uh, for all the fullness of nature and the being of God resides, dwells, in the resurrected body of Christ. Colossians chapter 2, verse. 9. So we can read verses 2 and 9 that go with those guys, those sentences, guys, to give you a better understanding of what we're talking about. So let's jump to Colossians 2, and we're going to read verses uh, 8 and 9. Two, nine, yep. right? two, eight, and nine. Eight and nine? Yep, we both. Yep. Okay. Right. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So, that's what we're talking about, like philosophy and stuff, you know. People will just come up with their own ideas, I guess, you know. Yeah. It sounds so intelligent, you know, but it's worldly and um, knowledge, worldly knowledge, not godly knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talked about that. Right. Yeah. So, all right, we're over here. We're going to start with... um. Second John, or is that... Yep, Second John 3.16. Oh, I missed. Oh, wait, is it... <laughs> Hold on a second. Because it says three down here. I'm like, what, what happened? It doesn't mean. Uh, I think we, we messed up here. Hold on, guys. No, so, no. Oh, anyways, so. Oh, so oh John 3.16. Okay. You know what that one is, right, yeah. guys? Only begotten Son. It means that Jesus had a beginning. No, it's asking. I'm going to oh, answer. Okay. Only begotten Son, Mone Gems, does not mean that Jesus had a beginning. The word points to Jesus being the only Son of God. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17, Isaac is called Abraham's only son, even though Abraham had other sons. In Genesis chapter 22, verse 2, and chapter 25, verses 1 through 6, including Eshmael. Huh? Yep, Eshmael, yep, the son. Right. Genesis chapter 16, verses 15 through 16. Jesus is the only Son of God in the sense that only Jesus is fully God and the Son of the Father eternal. That's John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, and chapter 14, or no, actually, I'm sorry, verses 14 to 18. Uh, I can then we read got that. Proverbs. Huh? I can read that actually for John? you guys real quick. John verses, uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, it says, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And then I'm going to jump, amen, and jump to 14 to 18, and it says, And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as, as of the only begotten of the Father, Full of grace and truth. John was it man? Yeah. John bear witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me, and of his fullness have all we received in grace. 
for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man had seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Amen. Amen. And then we're going to jump to Proverbs 8.22. Chapter 8, verse 22. Mm -hmm. And then we'll follow in the same in the Holy Spirit. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. Okay. Does this mean that Christ, the wisdom, was created? The answer to this is this is not a literal description of Christ. Description of Christ. But a personification the personification of, of wisdom. Amen. For example, Christ did not live in heaven with someone named Sanity. Verse 12. He did not build a house with seven columns. Chapter 9, verse 1. This verse poetically says that God used wisdom to create the world. See Proverbs chapter 3, verses 19 to 20. Well, Sorry, we're gonna end. Go we're gonna end. No, it's okay. <laughs> we're gonna end um, this this teaching, guys, with Proverbs chapter three, um, verses nineteen twenty. Hallelujah! Thank you, guys, for being patient with us. Amen. You want it? Or? Can you go right ahead, Jeff. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Lord, by wisdom, hath founded the earth; by understanding, hath He established the heavens. By His knowledge, the depths are broken up. And the clouds drop down the dew. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? That's beautiful. Yes. Well, that's wow. how that's what we, we got for you guys in this. our teaching tonight. Hallelujah. Um, actually our brother in laws teaching that he helped he's been helping us guide us. Um so we just want to come on here and try to explain it to anyone who needs understanding of the Godhead of the Trinity. Um, I hope that the verses that we read helped you guys, edified you in Jesus' name. Uh, may the Lord be with you today, tomorrow, and forever. Um, God bless you guys. Uh, we're going to end this with a prayer. And we thank you guys for watching. And uh, amen. Thank you, pray. <clears throat> My brother will end the video with a prayer. Amen. Bow our heads. The word is holy. We name it. We agree in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We pray in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this teaching. And thank you for those who watched. And we hope that it's been edifying and pleasing. And we hope that everyone can get something out of this. And we hope to have more teachings in the future. Um, Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, guys. Amen. May the Lord be with you today, tomorrow, forever. Again, yet again, I thank you for coming on and joining with us. And if you couldn't watch the whole thing, that's fine. You can watch the rest later. Um, I'm just glad to have um, you guys come on. Glory to God. Um, may the Lord be with you. Um, in Jesus' name. And until next time. Jesus loves you. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Amen. God bless everybody. God bless. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I can't believe that. It's still going. Oh.